What's up everybody? Jason here from Rowing Parts Supply. Today we're going to be taking a look at straps. Not all straps are the same, so stay tuned to see what you should be looking out for with your straps to help keep your equipment safe when you're out on the road. In our opinion here at Rowing Parts Supply, a set of good quality straps is a necessity for every rowing program or boat owner. And that could be uh, obviously racing shells, it could be recreational rowing shells, it could be coastal rowing, it could be kayaking, whatever. You know, when you're out on the road, these straps are help, helping to protect anywhere from, you know, a thousand or a couple of thousands of dollars uh, of boats on, on racks or I mean, up to a half a million dollars for a fully loaded large trailer uh, with eights on it. They need to be checked over and, and maintained just as much as the, the boats themselves are and all the parts for the boats. Now, not all straps are made the same. And, and the biggest thing um, is the material. And if you see here, we got, we got two different materials. Uh, one is a, is a polyester. Uh, you'll see that it's a, a little bit shinier of a fabric. Um, and then there's a uh, polypropylene. Now, polyester, it, it, has, it has its place, right? But for, for water sports, it's, it's, it's not really the best place. Um, the, the biggest thing is it's gonna absorb water, you know? So on a, on a trailer, out on the road, in a rainstorm with polyester straps, it could absorb water and it's, gotta have a, it's gonna have a little bit of stretch to it. So those straps are gonna get loose. Now. You should be checking your straps consistently when you're on the road to start with, but that's just one more area that, that things could go wrong. With polypropylene, it's a naturally water resistant material, so it's gonna have less um, stretch as it gets wet. Right, and there's all different types, types of uh, polyester, right? Um, and you can get it almost anywhere is another one. And it's nice and shiny, it's really soft. Um, it feels like a really good strap, but Again, it's got its place, but on a rowing trailer or any trailer holding down boats um, in rainy weather, I, I don't really think polyester is the way to go. Now, NRS has been supplying straps for the rowing community, or excuse me, for the water sports community since the early 70s. Um, and they supply these polypropylene straps. Uh, this is the one and a half inch uh, version. Um, that's that's the, the width that, that I prefer. Um, but these are specifically made for water sports. Um, and this, this is what we carry here at, at Rowing Parts Supply. And, and again, I think A, their, their reputation and their material and craftsmanship uh, is just, it's as good as you're gonna get. Um, so let's take a look now at, at a little bit of maintenance issues and things to watch out for for any strap. So you decide to have whatever strap you wanna have. Um, these are how I store straps. I roll them up. And always, and always have, you know, they can be on spools, on uh, electrical uh, cord spools, whatever. Um, but things to be looking out for in, in, in this form are actually pretty easy, right? It looks pretty good, right, from this side. But if you were to flip it over, right, you see different you see little abrasions, right? And these little abrasions are, are the crux of the issue with these straps, right? When they get tightened down, right, on the edges of boats, right, they could really create you know, some friction there in, in, in wearing down that, that material. To a certain point, a little bit's gonna happen, a little bit's gonna be okay, but let's take a look at what a little bit is and then where it kind of progresses. So actually, we'll take a look at the polyester first. All right, we'll unroll it. And just what abrasion looks like, again, just a little bit of fraying there. That's not terrible, if, and it's right at the end. You're never gonna be, you shouldn't be tying down boats on a rack with just this little bit left over. I mean, out, a little bit of abrasion out here is not a big deal. You're probably never gonna get it out here because it's not under tension at all. Um, but as we go interior, right, we see some more abrasion. Now that abrasion over time, this is definitely weakening the material. Like there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, could you get, could you tie a boat down with that? Yeah, sure, right, it's not gonna be terrible. You could you could get a trip on that, and I and I don't think I mean I would be checking it a lot if I were on the road with this strap, but 
I, I wouldn't not put this strap on there. I would just do a due, due diligence on my way home um, and make sure that this strap was taken out of service when we got home. But the thing that happens is this becomes that, right? And it becomes that relatively quickly. So this is obviously bad. And that's going to happen on, and that can happen on any strap, right? Any material. It's not just polyester that this can happen on. But these are the things that, that you should be looking out for, right? Again, taking a look at this. Same things can happen. Right, a little bit of abrasion, not terrible. It's, again, it's gonna happen. It's not, it's not something that might happen, it's gonna happen. Right, but a little bit of abrasion turns into maybe just a little bit of a tear. And you kind of think, oh, not, not really a big deal. Like we can deal with that or maybe we'll deal with it when we get back. But I remember as a coach, there were a lot of times that I didn't re remember to check the strap or get it, take it out of service when I got back because of all the different things happening. But all of those issues then turn into this. Right, and now all of a sudden you've got a potentially fifty thousand dollar boat on a trailer with half a strap on one side of it, and we're not going to go into here of one strap uh, in the bow of the boat, double strapping the bow. That's that's for you and 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 your mentor and your opinions. Um, but this is an issue. This needs to be taken care of as soon as possible. Right, so just because you get a tear in a strap, obviously this close to the end, you're not gonna do, do a whole lot with that. Uh, you know, one thing that I've done over the years is I'll, I'll give this strap, I'll cut it down to about, you know, six feet or so and just give it to a rower. Well, you know, lowers like to make belts out of them or whatever. Um, but this strap, with it being that close to the buckle, that strap's done. You should not put that back onto a boat on a trailer. You just, it just shouldn't happen. Now, if you look at this strap, again, just about abrasion, we've got about another eight feet of strap here before we get to this cut mark, right? This strap is still, is still usable. It, you may not be able to strap an eight down in the middle, right? But you could, with six or eight feet on this end of it, you could strap a, a single down, you could strap a, a four down probably, right? And all you need to do is just, well, just cut it at that part, right? And it's really easy. I mean, you need to take a pair of scissors, right? And I always like to cut it at an angle, right? So now you have a strap that, this one's about eight feet long. And to keep it from fraying, you can take a lighter, like this is a butane lighter, right? You could, I mean, here's a, some matches, it doesn't really matter, right? Whatever, and just melt down the edge just a little bit, just to keep it from fraying. Now I like this angle just because it's easier to push through the buckle at the end as opposed to it being square, right? But now all of a sudden this strap, again, it may not strap down an eight, but you can use it, you could, you could be able to use it for, again, a single or sling in a single or a pair or whatever. So just because you see a cut in the strap doesn't mean that you throw the entire strap away. Take a take a look at it and 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 notice that how how much buckle or how much strap do you have to the buckle before the first before the first abrasion or cut. If you've got a good bit, then keep it. Cut it down and use it for something else, right? So you're not just wasting parts. But these are the things that, that you should be looking out for for the strap itself. Now, when it comes to maintenance of the buckle, it's they're pretty they're pretty simple, right? I always like to take just a little bit of lubricant and protectant, right? And it's just got springs on the bottom of it. And take just a little bit, put a drop on each side, right? And you don't have to do this every time. You probably obviously shouldn't do it every time, but put just a little bit on it and work it. Maybe at the end of the season while you store them, you know, over the summer or over the winter, just so that mechanism stays nice and lubricated, right? Without this being lubricated, the springs aren't going to push back enough to create enough force to pinch the strap itself, right? Now, these these are, are, are simple to get. Don't let a little bit of abrasion or a little small cut or a big cut get in the way of, of your training and your athletes training and all the work that they put in because a boat flies off the trailer, 
right out here. I'll throw up some pictures here of, of straps that, that I personally have caught and other people that I know, other coaches I know have caught, right? Of boats on the trailer. It happens, right? It happens with, with all of them. You just may need to make sure that you're paying attention to them and you're checking them, especially when, while you're out on the road. Every time you stop to get gas, you need to check every strap on the boat. It's gonna be really important, especially if it's raining, you might need to check it a little bit more often in order to make sure that the, that the tension is right on your, on your straps. But at the end of the day, don't let an, a, a cut strap you know, just, just go to waste. Use as much of it as you can. But as simple of a fix as this is, don't let this get in the way. Don't let an easy abrasion turn into a cut, turn into a bigger cut, which then turns into a boat coming off the trailer down the highway, right? It's, it's just not worth it. This $12 strap is not worth that insurance claim and those athletes not having a boat to, to row, erase, or train in, right? So here's another Maintenance Monday from Jason here at Rowing Parts Supply. Hope you guys learned a little bit. You can take it back with you. Check your straps now. We offer these straps in 9-foot and 12-foot links on the website. Hey, make sure you're paying attention to all of your parts. Reach out to us if, you, if there's anything that you need. Right, and take a look at uh, the website at rowingpartsupply.com for any of the parts that, that you might need or you don't even know that you need yet. Good luck out there with your training and stay safe out on the water and we'll catch you next Monday for another Maintenance Monday.